Hello, I'm Dr. H. Michael Chitwood. And I'm Dr. Shannon C. Cook. And we're live right here at the ICC of Miracle Center. Do we have something great for you? In fact, I'll tell you something. Nobody has this in the world. We found this classic video of Dr. John Avanzini. And you know Dr. John, don't yes, you? Yes, he is the father of the biblical economics message. And this is some classic footage from him overseas. He's talking about, Dr. Chitwood, manifestations. This has never been seen before. It's classic footage. Yeah, and by the way, it is in English, so you'll be able to understand it. Let me tell you <laughs> what we did. We have two-hour video here, roughly, and we decided to ask our production team, which is great, to break that down into small segments. I promise you, if you will watch this at your leisure and take this into your spirit, manifestation yes. is gonna take place in your life. Yes. Now, we're getting ready to go to it right now. Make sure you watch all these clips, don't you think? Yes. They need to watch powerful. them all, don't they? Watch them all, watch it's gonna be powerful. All right, let's go to that clip right now. Oh my goodness, woo! Woo! My goodness, yes. Yes, 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 yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo! Be before you are seated, would you help me to get started in a proper fashion by telling that person that's near to you that Brother John thinks, thinks they look real nice. Would you do that for me, please? Amen. I understand we have overflow rooms right now with people in them. I do extend that same word to you. We just thank God for you. I had hoped to make a little visit to the overflow room at the end of the service. Did we make plans for that, Pastor? All right, so whenever the session is over, don't leave the overflow area. Uh, I'm going to come and have a personal word with each one of those groups. One day soon, we will all be together in one great big room. Amen. Yes, 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 yes. Hallelujah. I have had something stirring in my heart. I, uh, at the end of this session, I will mention it to you. I still want just a little more confirmation, but at the end of this session, I will mention something to you that's very special. I believe that God is going to allow me to do before I leave here this week. I go home to be with my wife, and uh, we have three, almost four weeks that we will be off, and... Uh, I told her that we will jump in the automobile and we will leave the cell phones at home and we'll spend that time together. So I, 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 we work all year long. We go every day. I'm only home seven days a month. But then I come to that last month and I like to take that time with my wife. You know, one of the things I told my wife, and I say this to the young wives that are here, I told her when we were just married, now she was uh, 17 and I was 18 when we were married. Yes. And people said it would not work, but 43 years later, we're still married. Yeah. But I, I give you the secret. I told her, I said, as long as you behave like a bride, I will call you my bride. And so 43 la years later, I go to pick up my bride and we go away for a rendezvous for, <laughs> hallelujah. She wrote a little, she did a ser series of tapes. Have you ever seen her tapes on how to keep the honey in the honeymoon? <laughs> you should have those in the store here. We, we, we'll make arrangements to... Uh, Aris. Uh, all right, Aris. Uh, she's got a series of tapes that are so fantastic that whenever they're offered, they always outsell my tapes. 
How to Keep the Honey in the Honeymoon. Woo, it's a tremendous set. Um, I, when, I, when she first started preaching, she's quite a preacher, my wife. When she started preaching, her tapes sold faster than my tapes. <laughs> and you know, that, is a, that can be a demoralizing thing. <laughs> so I started a new ministry. I called my tapes the priceless word of God, and I gave them away for six months, and so I immediately went past her again. <laughs> Amen. Go with me to Proverbs 13. You know, I feel these meetings that we're in right now will be long, long, long-term effect from these meetings. Many of you will look back to these meetings and say, this is where my life really changed, really changed. There's a verse of scripture here that I want to put into your spirit, and we're going to deal with it today. It's the 13th chapter of Proverbs and the 12th verse. The Bible says, Hope deferred maketh the heart sick. Hope deferred maketh the heart sick. But when the desire cometh, it is a tree of life. We cannot as believers continuously, continuously, continuously be disappointed by not seeing that which is promised come to pass. It has to come to pass. Now, I thank God that I've had seasons of learning how to stand and believe God, but there have been manifestations of the promises of God. You cannot go indefinitely without manifestation. Say that word with me, please, would you? Manifestation. Let's say it again together. Manifestation. It's a beautiful word, isn't it? But if it does not occur, your heart becomes sick. Your heart will become sick. But there is an enemy that fights manifestation. He doesn't want manifestation to take place in your life because when it does, manifestation of the promises of God greatly lift your spirits and give you great confirmation of the realness and the bigness of your God. You know, without manifestation, we will never realize that God is bigger than the circumstances that you're in. He's bigger than the circumstances you're in. Now, now that is a, that is a, see, uh, 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 Dr. Cirillo had a plaque that he gave me years ago, and the plaque stated, not to look at the bigness of my problems, but to keep my attention focused on the bigness of my God. See, we all have big problems, but we have a bigger God than our problems. But if we're not careful, we will focus on the problem. And when you focus on the bigness of your problem, it crowds out your understanding of the bigness of your God. So I want to speak to you today about manifestation, but to do that, I must uh, bring you to an uh, understanding of where we are on God's calendar. Where are we on God's calendar? You know, God works in cycles. How many of you know that God works in cycles, see? There are cycles, but there's some things about a cycle that you have to understand. Every cycle has a beginning, and every cycle has an end. You cannot enter a cycle without heading towards the end of that cycle. But now, the church is a very unique organism, very unique organism, because the church has a traditional part of it, and it has a very advanced part of it. Now, God is not interested in only saving the advanced part of it. God wants all of his children to come into the fullness of the measure of the stature of Christ. What you have to understand when you belong to a cutting edge church, you understand that term here in this nation? A cutting edge church. Now, City Harvest Church is a cutting edge edge church. It is not a traditional church, but there has always been cutting edge people, people that have always been 
on the forefront of what God is doing, but that doesn't mean that what is happening in your life right now is not going to happen in the whole church. Because when God moved into the fullness of the Spirit for the church, when he started the latter reign in the beginning of this century, it was a cutting-edge people that stepped into it. But then a few years back, we had the charismatic renewal and all of the traditional church stepped into it. You, you follow what I'm saying? So you have to understand when I say a cycle, it doesn't mean the cutting edge church goes through a cycle way much earlier than the traditional church does, but the traditional church is coming. The traditional church is coming into the cycles that take place. So, do, you know, today, Baptists are speaking with other tongues. Pen uh, Presbyterians, Lutherans, Catholics are speaking with other tongues. And, and uh, so we come to find that while the cutting edge church operates in a cycle, it means that it doesn't mean when we complete a cycle, it doesn't mean that it's completed for the traditional church. They may just be entering it. You know, they may just be coming and putting their toe in the water, but we've already gone through it and we're headed into another cycle again. Well, the cycle that has just finished in the church in relation to the cutting edge church is the cycle of uh, rhema. It's been the rhema cycle where the rhema word came, where the word was, uh, was a living word. Uh, God was speaking uh, the rhema word into the church. And that would also be called the cycle of revelation, the cycle of revelation, because you can't have restoration without having revelation. What would you, you, we wouldn't know what needed to be restored if all we had was the traditional understanding. There had to be revelation. And, and so one of the reasons that you find, and I will quickly deal with this, I had a formal education in the ministry. I went to the Bible school. I got my master's degree. I got my doctor's degree. And I learned everything that I didn't need to know. Uh, if, if, if I learned, I, 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 it was behind me now, I could move on because I was in the traditional church. And when I got filled with the Holy Ghost and all of a sudden I realized that there was the cutting edge church, I came to find that the things that I had been formally taught were many times a hindrance to being able to be on the cutting edge. That's why you find sometimes that God will snap up a young man and, and his wife and just launch them into, um, and people say, where's his credentials? Well, his credentials are in the Holy Ghost. Amen. He's not been called to affirmation. He's been called to revelation. Yes. So he, he, you, you follow what I'm saying? One of the hardest things I fought was to be filled with the Holy Ghost, all the teaching that I'd had against the filling of the Holy Ghost. But as I broke through one barrier after the other, after the other, God has allowed me now in my 61st year to be, there's no telling where I would have been if I could have started out in revelation instead of affirmation. Do you follow what I'm saying? All right, now with that said, there is a new cycle that is now beginning in the body of Christ, in the cutting edge part of the body of Christ. And it is the, it is the cycle of manifestation. Manifestation. Now you see, the, in, in this city now, for instance, uh, to do what you're talking about doing, to build this great building or to make this great, uh, who knows what it is exactly that God's going to do. You follow, but something is cooking. How many of you know something's cooking in the, in the spiritual pot of God? He's cooking up a miracle. And it is going to be something that will be so far beyond what any, the traditional church is not even thinking that way. The traditional church is thinking little, it's thinking small, it's thinking uh, it's too expensive, it's thinking how can we, uh, how are we going to do, but, but there is the cutting edge and when you manifest it, it's going to be light to a lot of young men and a lot of young women are going to say, it can be done, we can build, we can build for 10,000, we can build for 20,000, we can build for 100,000. Do you grasp that? See, but what's happening now is the era and the cycle of manifestation. It is now time for manifestation. Now let me, 
let me quickly bring you up to speed on what I mean when I say manifestation. I'm talking about biblical manifestation. Biblical manifestation is what we're going to talk about tonight. And when you talk about biblical manifestation, there are many teachers that teach the manifestation of evil in the earth and how it pertains to the Bible. Church, I am not going to be teaching anything tonight about the manifestation of evil. There is a confusion in the earth. Many in the church, many of the leaders of the church believe that the timetable of the Lord's return is linked to the evil in the earth. And they're continuously talking about, well, you know, things will grow worse and worse. And, and this is happening, and the, the, this is taking place, and there's another thing here. Evil is here, and the AIDS epidemic, and uh, violence in the streets, and all those things. God is not waiting for the heathen to get in place to return. He is waiting for the church to get in place. Do, do you follow? The heathen are always ready for judgment. But the children of God, the church, is not ready for judgment. Because watch with me, please. The Bible says that the judgment of God will begin in the house of God. If the Lord came tonight, it would be hundreds of years before he could ever judge a sinner. Because he'd have to walk the aisles of the churches of the world and judge the saints because judgment starts in the house of God. So God is not coming back at the second coming to be embarrassed by a bride that is not ready. He's coming for a chaste virgin without spot, without wrinkle, so that he can say to the world, don't tell me that it's impossible to do what I ask you to do because look at my church. She has done it and she's prospered and she's better off than you are listening to me, see? so. Amen. So, I, I, I'm not going to waste your time telling you about how evil and how the darkness is increasing. What I want to talk to you about is biblical manifestation in the realm of getting what's in this book out of the book and operational in your life. How many of you have some things that are still in the book that need to come out of the book and become operational in your life. How many out there? All right, so we've got the right message for tonight. Every hand went up. Every one of you has several things in that book that needs to come out and needs to be in your life operational. Now, when you talk about manifestation, you have to realize the several degrees of manifestation that this book talks about. There are several degrees of manifestation. Now, the simplest, simplest form of manifestation is when the word or the logos becomes rhema. When the logos becomes rhema. Now, that, now please notice that in the last cycle, in the cycle we just completed as the cutting edge church, when the, word, when the logos became rhema, we thought that was the end cycle. We thought this is it. We're now getting a rhema word from God. But God said that is not the final cycle. That is manifestation in its simplest, simplest form. Now, you know how that works. You're reading the Bible, and all of a sudden, a verse just lights up. Have you ever had that happen? And you run, show it to someone. You say, look at this. And they say, oh, that's very nice. No, look, don't you see what this says? Yes, it's nice. I like it. No, no, no. You follow it. What happens now, and please catch this. See, for instance, let, let, me, let, let me pick, you know, the Singapore telephone book. You would think that was a very public book, wouldn't you? But it's almost, it's, it's not a very public book. If you took it to Paris, it would mean no one, nothing to anyone. If you took it to New York, it's not a public book in New York. There's only one really public book, and that's the Bible. Because anywhere you take it, as soon as a person reads it, it begins to speak to their heart that God loves them. Are you catching that, see? So, so we're, you're standing there with this most public book ever written, the book that is about everybody, and all of a sudden, boom, it speaks very personally to you. It, 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 it changes, and it ceases to be public, and it becomes extremely private, and sometimes you have to say, 
How did you know that? How could that be in there? I thought I had that hidden in my heart, but it is lit up to me. You see, that is the simplest, simplest form of biblical manifestation is when the logos becomes rhema, when it becomes a rhema word. But now in manifestation, we're not going to be at the simplest form when manifestation takes place. We need to be at the deepest, heaviest, uh, most profound form of manifestation. Come with me and I'll show it to you. Go to the book of John. And when you come to John and you read there the first chapter of John and the 14th verse, the Bible says, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Now, when the logos became rhema, we thought it was sensational. But God always says the best wine is saved for last. It's always going to be better. And the next cycle now, what he says is the logos becomes flesh and steps out of the book and walks through the Galilee, comes into Jerusalem, dies on the cross of Calvary, is buried three days later, raises from the dead, ascends into heaven, and today he lives in the heart of every believer in the world. See, the highest, highest possible form of manifestation is when the logos becomes flesh. Are you catching that? Now, why, and, and please, uh, let, let me just drop in a note here. There are several people that have tried to preach this message, and it's, they, they do an admirable job of it. But just stay focused on what I'm going to say to you because it's a revelation with me. It's not a message with me. It's a revelation, and it'll become a revelation with you. All right, so now we find the Logos becomes flesh, steps out of the book, walks into the earth, and is now in the world in the heart of every believer. Manifestation in its highest form. Now when you have that and you deal with the word becoming flesh, the theologians have put it on a high, high pedestal. That's what you call heavy, heavy truth. I mean, this is the heavy stuff. The word became flesh. Woo! And the theologians are gathered around it and they're saying, please, this is so deep that if you're going to deal with that, we're going to have to help you. But church, please hear this. Anything that someone else has to understand for you will never belong to you. You will never possess what someone else has to understand for you. Are you grasping that? Most religion operates on the fact that the priest, the father, the whatever it is, the high guru, the lama, whatever it might be, that he has this understanding that you'll never have. He's high above you. That's not the way Christianity works. Christianity works that you will understand it. You will be filled with the Holy Ghost. You will do the greater works. You will be more than a conqueror. You will have uh, uh, power with God. It's not that someone else has to have it for you, but here we have this thing up on a high pedestal and, and you know, as long as something is unfamiliar to us, it's difficult to enter into. I'm Dr. H. Michael Chitwood, and I hope you enjoyed that video. If so, take a moment and comment on it and let me know. Also, take a moment to like this video and to subscribe to my channel. And by the way, hit that little bell in the top corner to make sure you're notified when I release new videos. And by the way, take a look around. We have lots of informative video and content on our YouTube channel, which I know you will enjoy. Now, if this video has touched you or made an impact in your life, click the link in the description to support us by making a donation now.